In this episode of Fictional Hangover, we talk about adorable carrots, cozy blankets, Operation False Pretenses, and cakes in our discussion of Pocket Peaches by Dora Wang. Hey everybody, welcome to Fictional Hangover, a podcast about young adult and new adult and sometimes other books, series, authors, voice actors, and illustrators that is full of spoilers. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. And today we're going to discuss Pocket Peaches by Dora Wang. Standard disclaimer. If you haven't read this book, please remember that Fictional Hangover is all about spoilers. If you haven't read and don't want to be spoiled, stop listening to us and go read the book. Then come back. If you haven't done this but want to pretend that you have, or if you don't care about spoilers, or if you just like the show so much that you don't care about any of that, then listen up. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! I was just thinking about adorable carrots and cozy blankets. Right? <laughs> nah. <laughs> so cuddly. Mm. Oh. I couldn't find a whole lot of background information for this one because, like, this is a debut. And yes, Dora Wang has, you know, been around and been doing stuff for a little while, but this is the first book. Mm. published but while i was looking i found out that not only does Dorwing have an instagram like it's her own instagram she has a pocket peaches instagram as well and there's like <sighs> merch so yeah oh. i got lost i got oh. lost on instagram i fell down that rabbit hole did you get lost and your bank card suddenly get emptied <laughs> no i mean it would have but like a lot of the stuff was sold out Oh, well, so, I mean, know, as tragic as that seems, sometimes that's for the best. Yeah. So, But everything there was precious, and, you know, we, spoiler alert, thought this book was precious, and all of, I mean, it's just comics. It's just comics on Instagram. It's just all the little gang oh. doing little cute things. So oh. it's fun. If you read this book and then you need more pocket peaches in your life then you can just go to instagram for years of comics yes and years and years of comics <laughs> years of comics with peaches and friends oh that is um at pocket dot peaches on instagram yes. i'm looking at it now <gasps> signs is a donut yeah there's some good stuff um, so I'm what are what are? Crueler. Oh no, I don't like those. Claire, Claire, come back to us. No, come back. No, no, come back. No, come back. I don't want to? Fine, I've closed the window. Come back because when we get to talk about the book. Okay. What were your initial thoughts? Probably the same as yours. So freaking precious. I just love that I accidentally found this one. <laughs> Yes, well, uh, yes, and I remember when you recommended it, I was like, yeah, so we're covering that, yeah? And I was like, yes, we're covering that. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. I do love the dichotomy of fictional hangover. It's like, murder, death, kill, horror, eyeballs, teeth, horrible, disgusting things you can literally smell, fluid everywhere, uh -huh. precious, adorable graphic novels and comics. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You yeah, can't that's say us. that we're not multitudes. <laughs> I think it's really funny because if if I were to read this not as a graphic novel, if it was if it was just a regular old cutesy book, I would vomit all over it and be like, why the fuck am I reading this? <laughs> but because <laughs> it's a graphic novel, it's tiny and precious, I love it. But no, nah, I don't want to read any book that is this cozy in, you know, text book form. No, no, it's fine. I, you, I want the illustrations. I need But them. unfortunately, the summary does not involve illustrations. So I think everybody needs to get a cosy blanket of your choice. Yes. Yes. Something to snuggle up with. Yes. You do as well. It'll all become clear as we read the summary. If yes, you haven't it will. read the book. 
that. Yes. Also, you know, maybe grab a cupcake or some popcorn. (gasps) Ooh, yes. Yes. Both. Yes. Both. Both. Yes. Why not both? Yes. Why not both? Let's dive in. (laughs) It's nighttime, and book club has just ended. Peaches is saying her goodbyes when she sees the new cat in Pocketon, Taro. Peaches has tried to talk to her, but Taro never seems interested in making friends. Others even whisper about how odd she is. Peaches debates between saying hello or going home to her cozy bed. Mm. (laughs) It's a tough choice. (laughs) Okay, that's it. Operation Friendship is a go, not Operation (laughs) Cozy Cozy Bed. Taro leaves and Peaches says hi as she passes, but Taro completely ignores her. Peaches spots Taro's forgotten book, the Book of Monsters, on the table and tries to return it, but Taro is nowhere to be seen and the only one around is some stuffy random wolf. (laughs) I love the random wolf. (laughs) They are so like, what the heck? (laughs) Sigh. Peaches will just have to give the book back next week. Back at home, Peaches takes a look in Taro's book and finds it full of information like beginner charms, legend of the giant kraken, and how to defeat werewolves. This is my kind of book. I think I might (laughs) own this book. (laughs) <laughs> it's a little too intense for Peaches, however, so she hides it under her bed before snuggling down to sleep with Sesame, her pet dog, and her carrot plushie. <laughs> Nicely demonstrated by a man. I, I have one. Actually, Patreon subscribers, I have two carrot <laughs> plushies. <laughs> I love my weird collection of carrots. It always pays off for fictional hangover. <laughs> Excuse me. (laughs) The next morning at the bakery, run by her friends, Peaches meets up with those pals, Mango and Pogi. As Peaches eats the absolutely scrumptious lemon poppy loaf, she tells her friends about Taro forgetting her book, how it's super scary and gave her nightmares about monster carrots chasing her. (laughs) Pogi has a theory that Taro is a magical cat. It started because when Taro moved in, it was a dark and stormy night, and Poggy heard strange noises coming from Taro's apartment and saw flashes of light. Then she got too scared and ran away. (laughs) Mango says it may have been witchcraft, or, you know, maybe she was just watching a movie. (laughs) <laughs> Anywho, um, are they still on for their movie Friday night? Heck yeah, they need to watch the finale of Mew Mew Dream Guardian. <laughs> they ponder what could happen before Mango and Poggy have to get back to work. The next day, Peaches and Sesame are walking in the park when Peaches spots Taro sitting under a tree. Next to Taro, some mean people say some mean things before throwing a water balloon at Taro. That's <sighs> absolutely disgusting. Jerks. Shocked, Peaches starts to make sure that Taro is okay, but then Sesame steals some kid's hot dog and runs off, <laughs> so Peaches has to chase them down. <laughs> it's hilarious. When the hullabaloo is over, Taro is gone. A Sesame enjoys his spoils, and Peaches enjoys a legally obtained hot dog. She chats with her friend Cream, who's out for a jog. Cream hasn't seen Taro, though notes Taro is an interesting one. She was invited to a party by Sprout, but declined. Peaches realises befriending Taro is harder than expected. Later, after Peaches has finished grocery shopping, (laughs) choosing a delicious-looking cereal, by the way, that she definitely needed, she runs into Taro on the bus home. Peaches introduces herself and lets Taro know she has her book and how she tried to tell her in the park yesterday, but there was a whole stolen hot dog incident. (laughs) Peaches also notes that those kids were really rude, and Taro tells her that they thought she was a witch, so she pretended to curse them. (laughs) Genius! 
Peaches asks what books Tara likes to read, and Tara says she's into anything supernatural, spooky, or fantasy. <laughs> she also really likes horror movies. Again, same Z. <laughs> Peaches may be lying a little when she says she enjoys those types of movies too and fumbles a recommendation about a clown who's also a vampire. (laughs) As Taro is getting off the bus, Peaches invites her to Friday's movie night and says they're going to watch something scary, and she accepts the invitation. Peaches is very happy that Operation Friendship is working. Is it though? (laughs) Yeah. Is this not Operation False Pretenses? Anywho. That is actually what it is. Yeah. Meanwhile, Mango and Porgy are making cupcakes to get ready for movie night and debating the cake to frosting ratio. This is an important debate which we shall have later. Peaches calls with a change of plans for Friday's movie. They're now going to watch Tourist Trapped 3. Mango points out Peaches hates scary movies, but Peaches insists she's not a scaredy cat anymore. Porgy is dramatically devastated by the change of movies. The next day is Friday, and as Peaches cleans her house, Poggy tries to resist doogling the ending (laughs) of Mew Mew before he and Mango meet with Taro to head to Peaches' house together. Taro has left her bus pass in her apartment, so Puggy uses this as an opportunity to snoop, pretending he needs to use the bathroom. The apartment is pretty bare. There are unpacked boxes everywhere, and in one, Puggy finds what looks like a wand. (gasps) When Taro has her bus pass, together they head out. Meanwhile, Peaches has burnt the popcorn. (gasps) It's not the best way to start movie night. Taro, Mago, and Porgy arrive just before a huge stall starts. Peaches distributes cozy, fluffy, extra heavy, and super soft blankets and makes sure everybody has a drink. And then they have cupcakes, Mango made, and chat. Taro tells them that her old town was very small and small-minded. Once Peaches makes a new batch of popcorn, they settle in to watch the movie. Peaches and Porgy aren't really enjoying it, and Peaches takes the opportunity to duck out to make more popcorn when she can. She should have stayed in her cosy bed. That's just that's just something that we all have to think about every single day. Yeah. Stay in in the cosy bed. Yeah. Peaches lingers outside the living room door. She doesn't want to go back to the movie. Taro comes out and gives her a shock, causing Peaches to throw her glass and cover Taro in lemonade. Taro heads to the bathroom to clean up, and Mango and Puggy come to check if everything is okay. No, it is not okay. Peaches is having a mini breakdown over what she sees as a tragedy of a night. She's still a big scaredy cat and doesn't like horror, even though she told Taro that she does. Oh! That's why they're not watching Mew Mew. <laughs> Mango tells Peaches to tell Taro the truth. Nah, you can't do that. I'm just gonna push through it. Ugh. Peaches goes back into the kitchen to get a towel to clean the spilled lemonade and notices the kitchen window is open, letting the storm in and soaking Taro's book. No! <laughs> Peaches picks it up and goes to hide in her bedroom. Mango and Porgy come in and tell Peaches they can stop watching the movie. Peaches admits it's not the movie that has her upset this time. It's what has happened to Taro's book. Taro is walking by as Peaches is dramatically exclaiming, This night is a disaster! Maybe I can hide up here and avoid Taro forever! Taro looks sad, but is willing to leave. Oh, She gets it! It's not the first time people have wanted to avoid her. Peaches rushes after her and admits to being a big scaredy cat and about how she lied about liking horror just so they could watch a movie together. Peaches likes cute and fluffy and round things. (laughs) 
she's also sorry that she lied. She just wanted to be friends. Taro admits to not being great at expressing her feelings, and because of that, people generally find her pretty odd. Nobody has tried so hard to be her friend, though. Peaches and Taro return to Mango and Pogi. Pogi excited that they may get to watch Mew Mew after all. Taro absolutely freaking loves Mew Mew. Well, there's still time to watch it and a few cupcakes left, so the friends settle in on the sofa together. When the movie is finished, they're all happy and discussing what happened. Taro drops the bombshell that there is an animated TV series of Mew Mew and they plan a three-day slumber party to binge it. The next day, after work, more popcorn is made, games are logged off, and the new friends settle in at Peach's house for the Mew Mew Marathon. <gasps> that would be so much fun. Three days of pure binge. Wow. Oh. Wow. With friends and popcorn and cupcakes and cozy blankets. And cozy blankets and stuffy carrots. Yes. Okay. Everyone, listen to this promo from another podcast. Or maybe it's from our own podcast. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to pick this time. It might, you might be surprised. I don't know. Everybody listen. I'm going to squeeze my carrot, which sounds oddly inappropriate. Uh, and we're going to we'll move on. We're going to move on. Please remember that Fictional Hangover is a free podcast and always will be. If you'd like to support the show, become a patron of ours on Patreon at patreon.com slash fictional hangover, then come back. Your support will help us bring you more spoiler-filled discussions and ridiculous content you know and love. Now, back to the episode. <sighs> I will have a nap at my blanket. Okay. Uh, Look. She wakes. Wake up, Claire. Okay. Standout moments for me are the carrot stuffies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's just one. There's just one carrot stuffy in the book. But, but there's also like, the dream. There's also the dream with the nightmare carrots. And I have both. I have my sweet, precious stuffy and I have this one that looks like it could be from a nightmare. It's got shifty eyes, if you can see on the Patreon. Everyone should join the Patreon just so they can see this carrot. I mean, he's got little he's got a little green hairdo up here. But he's got the shiftiest, scariest eyes. And also his eyebrows go down like He has the shiftiest of shifty carrots. Carrot. Does he have sharp, pointy teeth? You're not going to uh, find out yet. No, he do He doesn't have teeth. Neither of them have teeth. It's probably the best. Yeah. Probably. So I just love that. Like, I don't think I've ever felt so seen. As soon as I saw the a, carrot stuffy. In I was a middle like, grade graphic novel. Yeah. I knew. I was like, doesn't Amanda have that? I only see, like... And you, you had that that carrot because I know you had you've got carrot things. I was yeah. positive you had a carrot stuffy yeah. that looked exactly like the one in yeah. the comic. So I'm very happy. Yes, <laughs> so precious. Um, do you know what else I really liked? Mm. When Sesame the dog stole the hot dog. <laughs> yes. Yes, I enjoyed that immensely. <laughs> Hey, and that kid ended up with ice cream, so I don't think they've got grounds for complaint. No, definitely not. No. And then also, I Peaches got a hot dog. I mean, it was just a hot dog ice cream party. Yes, a legally obtained hot dog this time. Though, legally obtained sure. hot dogs are the most important kind of hot dogs to have, yes. I think. Don't steal hot dogs. No. Legally obtained hot dogs are important. I enjoyed 
the <laughs> selection of blankets that Peaches offered, like the extra yes. heavy, which I thought, oh, that's like the um, the weighted blankets for when you have anxiety. Yeah. We yeah. have one in the house, and my gosh, it's it's very warm. And it is actually a very delightful experience to have a nap underneath a, bl- a weighted blanket. Um, yeah, we have one too. I love it. It's it's amazing. It's sweltering though. It's so freaking hot. And when you wake up and you're like, <gasps> I'm too warm. You, you can't just fling yeah, it. Yeah, and then you can't. No, you can't because it's too heavy and you just get trapped. You feel like you're going to suffocate and die. I was actually having a nap under the wa- weighted blanket when I got the phone call saying I got the job that I'm currently in. And I was like, I can't escape the blanket to go and scream and dance and shout and, and work because I was trapped under the weight of blanket. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to phone yeah. the hubby upstairs and go, can you get me out of the blanket? Please, yeah. please help me, I'm trapped. Help me, I'm so trapped. But yes, I have fluffy blankets, I have this is a hand knitted blanket by my mum. Um, I, love it. I have a blanket with armholes, which is my favourite thing in the world ever. I love a cosy blanket. So I really appreciated that Peaches has a selection of blankets t- to the comfort of all of her friends when they can have it. Yes. Friends. I was like, yes, yes, I like that. Yeah. So we enjoyed that. But I also did enjoy. <laughs> Mango and Porky's frosting debate ratio. I thought that was hilarious. Was it, I think yes. um, was it, I can't remember which one was it. Mango was a two a one. I can't remember which way around. But the the debate is between either equal measures of frosting to cake, or two parts cake to one part frosting. I thought it was the other way around. I thought I thought the the cupcake was a vehicle for the icing, so it was two parts icing to one part cupcake. No, that's that's why it's. Uh, I'm I'm going to bring the panel up now because when it's an, it's this is an important thing we need to discuss. But it was because oh that's not it. Um, I I actually pulled the quote. It's a one to one. Everyone knows that cupcakes are just a vehicle for frosting. For a one to two, no, no, no. The frosting is there to highlight the cake. It's an accessory. Since I'm the baker, I overrule your decision. And really, we probably yes. should have gotten to touch with superfan Constance, who is an actual baker. Yes, an actual baker, like an capital letter B baker. Legitimate baker. So Porgy is a one to one. While mango is a one to two ratio. Okay. I'm glad that no one is a two to one ratio because that's too much icing. That's far too much icing. It's far too much too sweet. But I also do think it depends on the frosting that you use. Because if it's a buttercream, too much buttercream is too much buttercream. Yeah. Whereas if it's cream cheese frosting, Ew, which no. I think is a little bit milder, I can tolerate a little bit more of that. If it's Ew, a mascarpone no. cheese frosting, oh, oh that's a one to one ratio right there. Mm. I think it depends on the quality of the cake. Yeah. I'd be fine with a one to one ratio of like a nice whipped icing. I'm not a fan of cheese icings. I would love an Italian buttercream. Mm. All of it, all of it, and like a meringue, but like a meringue frosting is really nice as well because mm. it's so light and fluffy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think I tend to do a one to two ratio when I make cupcakes. Yeah, I. I mean, what with me having the diabetes and all, I don't love a lot of icing. No, it's because it is just purest sugar. Yeah. But you gotta have a little bit. Yes. Oh, and I have a question for you. Are you are you one of the people who takes 
who breaks the cupcake in half and makes the cupcake sandwich with the icing in the middle. Not all the time. I have been known to do it on occasion if there's a lot of frosting. If there's a lot of mm-hmm. frosting, that's when I'll tend to do it because it makes it easier. But I just tend to like ram it in my mouth. <laughs> like mm-hmm. some savage. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a baking disaster the other day though. Oh, I was no. making I don't know, I was making a cheesecake for Christmas Day dessert and I totally did not read the recipe correctly for the bit the biscuit base it was a baked cheesecake and I just made this cake batter and I was like right screw this I don't want to waste I put it into because it was very wet and it was supposed to be crumbly it was supposed to be a biscuit base not a wet batter so I put them in cupcake cases and baked them and there were Mm -hmm. these the flattest things in the world and you look at them and go that's that's not cake but then I put frosting on them and sprinkles and you look at them and go that's cake and honestly they're not too bad they don't taste hor- horrible the ratios are mm-hmm. off but they do taste better with the frosting it's the texture the texture's weird hmm. so we've called them not cake oh not I like that cake. that's cute you just that's accidentally it. invented a delicious treat yes quite stodgy wouldn't recommend all the time though. Yeah. <laughs> My second attempt is much better. But yeah, okay. I think it depends on the cake. Like I've had cupcakes where, where I used to work, we used to get sellers in all the time and uh, on the team that I worked, I was the person that used to organize these people coming in. And we used to have cupcake sellers come in and they would often leave us a sample, you know, so thank you for letting them in because oh. we didn't charge. Um, yeah. So I've had many different person's cupcake in my life. Um, not that I'm saying I'm a connoisseur, but you know, I've had my fair share. And sometimes the cakes are so dry and stodgy that you need the frosting and it turns into the frosting the better part. Mm. So I think it just depends on the cake. Yeah. Now, to continue this cupcake conversation, almost as if we're not actually supposed to be discussing a book... What kind of cake for your cupcake do you prefer? Are you like a chocolate? Are you vanilla? Do you know Are you what? Honestly, strawberry? Like you know what? I'm a vanilla girl. Carrot cake? cake. I'm, I'm a basic bitch. I okay. enjoy a vanilla cupcake. I'm not the biggest chocolate fan. I enjoy chocolate. Mm-hmm. But I would never act of, I don't act, like, you know, when you go to a restaurant, and you have dessert. I never actively mm-hmm. have anything chocolatey base. Like I'm not. I'll. Mm. I have to. I, I'll. I'll have a chocolate bar. But I. I literally. I remember once at my old job, I had a chocolate bar sit on my computer for six months, as a special treat on a particularly stressed day, and I could resist it mm-hmm. for six months. And to look at the size of my, wow. like I've described myself, my snowman flake, a snowman figure. You would think all I do is eat chocolate, but no, 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 no. I do enjoy a ginger cake. Hmm. I'm making, I'm, I don't I do like make a ginger. I don't like ginger. Ginger makes my mouth itchy. Maybe you're having it too. Maybe you might have a slight allergy to it. I might. I can't do it. I, I, I don't tend to eat a lot of desserts. Again, mm. on account of the diabetes, um, but. I do like to bake a cake, and I made, this is back at Thanksgiving, a delicious chocolate and caramel cake. Oh, you sent me a picture. It did look nice. Yes. I put real, like, chocolate chips into the batter and melted some caramel and drizzled that over Mm. the top. That was good stuff. And I used a, I used a a can of icing. Yeah. Not I didn't make I didn't make my own icing this time. But uh, I like to whip in a whip in a Cool Whip in with my icing, and I added some cinnamon to it. It was very good. The whole mm. thing was delicious. I did eat a small bite of that cake. It was good. It was good stuff. I I don't think you can beat like a plain Victoria sponge cake with fresh strawberries and whipped cream. Like proper, Ooh, yeah. proper whipped double whipping cream, not yes. just you know, yeah, yes. 
I think that's Yeah, when nice. it comes to... Yeah. I, I like to make an angel food cake. And those are more diabetic friendly than other yeah. things. But I like to do that. And when I make those, I do whip up my own cream. Yeah. But the only... The only I say problem is because it's a fresh cream, it has to be eaten quickly. Whereas, yeah, like, too bad. You just got to eat the whole thing as fast as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Shucks. Yeah. I made a chocolate and Guinness cake the other day. That was quite nice. Mm. And I'm making a sticky toffee pudding cake in a couple of days. Which mm. I'm, it's not a bad, not too bad at that one. Yeah. I was just recently given a recipe for something called an impossible pie. And, oh. like, you just throw all of this stuff into a blender and mix it all up. Or a food processor, probably. Not a blender. And you just mix it all up and then you pour it into a pan. And as it bakes, the layers separate. Ah, so interesting. It, like, be- it becomes its own pie, even though you just thrown everything into a pile. It's coconut. And I like mm. coconut. Mm. Have you ever done the Oreo mug cake? That's interesting. That's quite not that. That is a, is a quick and dirty. If you fancying something sweet, but you don't really have anything desserty in the house, it's just get a mug. Get I think it's like usually four or five Oreos, and then put them in the mug, and then the milk comes to just just as the the to the top of the Oreos. Mash it together till it's smooth, and then microwave it for a minute or two, and it turns into a microwave cake. It's not bad. It really, it's no. so easy. I've done it a couple of times when I've really fancied something sweet, but I don't have anything in the house deserty. Because we tend yeah. not to have deserty things. I've got a fun. lot of chocolate and biscuits and stuff in the house at the moment, but that's because it's like five days after Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm going to I leave. Feel like we I should. Th- we, we'll move on. We'll go back to the book, but I'm going to leave this out to the listeners and say, you know, come on, comment somewhere. What's your cake preference? What's your frosting preference? If you've got any recipes, drop them in. We want to know what is your frosting ratio. You've got to weigh in on this very important yes. debate. Yes, and if you actually do weigh in, like. I always want to send people stuff in the mail. I want to send gifts. So, like, this is a perfect opportunity for someone, anyone, actually listening to the podcast (laughs) to share these things with us. And then, you know, we'll contact you and I'll send you, like, a sticker or or something in the mail. We have have treasures. We do have treasures. We're like dragons holding these treasures. But unlike dragons, we want to share these treasures. Yes. So let's see. Let's see. It's a brand new year. Yes. Let's see what happens. Yes, that would be good. Okay. Anyway, I, let's let's go back to the book. Um. Yeah. So I called it in the summary, Operation False Pretenses. But yes. yeah, Peaches, you literally lied to Taro in order to garner a friendship. That's not yeah. a basis for any relationship. No, I feel like it would have been more, I don't know, appropriate to be like, hi, I noticed that you're new in town and you were also at book club. I, too, like to enjoy books. And then when she's like, oh, I like super scary stuff. And then you say, I don't really like super scary stuff. Is there anything you can recommend that, you know, you could ease me into it? Or the same with horror movies. She's like, I love watching horror movies. Well, I don't really like that. But, you know, maybe you can recommend something. Yes. Try it that way. Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't straight up lie. No, no. And I felt really sorry for for Tarot because she's obviously having had a difficult time where she used to live. And she's having a little bit of a difficult time here. I mean, look at those horrible jerks in the park throwing a water balloon at her. I know. But, I mean, to be fair, her reaction of cursing them was... It was fantastic. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. But, yeah. I mean, Taro is deaf or witch. If she's not, like, a, like a ma- mystical, magical, actually has powers, I think she's certainly practicing or 
interested in the occult. Yeah. I... Which is relatable. Yes. Definitely. I think she might just be a little little spooky, little creepy creep like we are. Yeah. And just likes weird stuff. Which is just diverse. She 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 is us. Tarot is us. She loves yeah. the horror, but she also likes the precious things as well. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Tarot is a us. Cosplayer. That's why she's <gasps> got the wand. Yeah. Yes. I can see it. Uh, who is your favourite character? I want to say Mango. Because Mango actually talked sense to Peaches and was like, yes, stop lying. You don't have to watch this movie if you're too scared. You don't have to. You need to admit the truth. Mango yeah. talked a lot of sense to Peaches and I appreciated that, like, the straight talking. Yeah. What about you? I really liked Taro and how spooky she was. Oh, yeah. I just, I felt a kinship. And or the carrot plushie. <laughs> you see, I was going to say sesame because I felt a kinship wanting the hot dog. <sighs> yeah. You know, sometimes when you want a hot dog, you just got to have a hot dog. You just got to just got to steal a hot dog and not have a legally obtained hot dog. Mm. <laughs> what about surprises? Was it the Grand Theft Hot Dog or something else? <laughs> no, Grand Theft Hot Dog, fine. Not shocking because it was a dog and dogs are known to do that. I think what I was surprised by and a little bit disgusted. <gasps> mm, being completely fine with a ruined <gasps> book. Yes. Ugh. And then Sam. Ugh. And Peaches was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that your book got wet by the storm. And then what made it even worse was that Tara was like, no, it's fine. I've spilled juice on it several times. No. No. Gross. No. no. Bad. Not okay. That is not okay. It's a perfect opportunity for you to go to the bookstore and buy another copy and then buy a million more books that you want to buy. Exactly. Or borrow one from the library. Yes. I, I have please, to say it Please don't distressing. spill stuff on library books, though. Uh-uh. No. 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 It was very distressing to see. I mean, I think there should have been a trigger warning, really. Yeah. Like... <sighs> I remember dropping a book in the bath once. Devastated. No, Absolutely see, that's why devastated. I always listen to audiobooks. Well, this was back in the 90s before audiobooks were like mm. mainstream. You had to... They're on cassette and it was a yeah. health and safety you violation. Your boom box. <laughs> yeah. Don't put your, your boom box into the bathtub with you. No. That would have no. been the end. You have a cupcake in the bath. That's fine. That's, that's, that's being lush. Yes. Popcorn in the bath. It's being lush. Books yeah. in the bath, danger zone. Danger, yeah. No, I agree. That was. Do you want, I? If somebody damaged, I mean, I I have had people who've damaged books or not given them back. But if somebody's damaged a book, it's like I'm sorry, I've ruined your book. Let me replace it. Yes, I'm sorry, I've ruined your book. Let's go to the bookstore together. Yes. Let's go on an adventure together. We'll get some legally obtained hot dogs. We'll have some cupcakes. We can go, we'll go to the, the bakery. Bookshop. We can go to Mango and Porky's bakery. Yeah. And like, there's, there's nothing better than going to the bookshop, getting a great big haul of books, and then going and sitting down with a coffee or a cup of tea and a little sweet treat and looking through the pile that you've got. And being like, like we said, the dragon earlier. You are the dragon with your horde of gold. Going, look at my treasures. Yes. But these aren't the treasures that we give away. You've got to comment on cupcakes to get treasures. But yes. Yes. <laughs> is it time for Would You Rather? It is. <laughs> we 
we asked on social media. Would you rather watch a superhero movie or a horror movie at a slumber party? And I am not surprised by the responses. <laughs> on Facebook, it's 50-50. On Instagram, 100% horror. On threads, 80% horror. And on TikTok, 58% horror. And we have some comments. Colin on Facebook said, Slumber parties demand horror movies. All the films I've seen about slumber parties show that you start by watching a horror movie, getting close to prevent the scares, and then girls kissing and doing other awesome things with each other. This is what happens at slumber parties, and I will have nobody try to tell me different. <sighs> it's watching very specialised programming that probably involves a subscription service. Yeah, I think. And discreet billing. <laughs> yes, that is a very sexy slumber party. I've never been to that slumber party. I have never been to that slumber party. No, no. Mm. All the slumber parties I've been they've involved popcorn and cupcakes and pizza yes. and the baggiest, oldest usually pajamas. Yes, that your friend can get into with Yes, you. yes. I mean, if you're not like, you know, at one point clambering into the biggest fat pants you can find and then jumping around what's the point no point yeah and then usually somebody falling asleep and then sticking you know popcorn in their mouth to make them wake up and or choke oh i mean that that, that, that's not all the time ouija boards or light as a feather stiff as a board Mm, yeah calling a bloody mary yeah that's what happens at slumber parties yes Cody on Facebook says horror movies because I'd like to see something other than superhero movies for once. LOL. <laughs> Lindsay on Facebook said superhero movies because I'm a chicken. <laughs> Aww, that's precious. <laughs> Bree on Facebook says, See, at my sleepovers, we binge watch Disney and a ton of bingeable superheroes are on Disney Plus, so I have to pick that. Plus, a bunch of Disney princesses are basically superheroes. See Wreck It Ralph 2 for proof. Citing your source agree, I like it. Gwendolyn Lafroy on Threads says, I'm a scary cat. Give me a superhero movie any day. I'm going horror because it's a sleepover. I'm- yeah, I was about to say, I don't think that we have to answer this question because everyone will know that our answer is horror. Yes, yes. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy a superhero movie, but sure. not a slumber party. No. Okay. We, ha- we kind of already talked about this. <laughs> kind of already had this discussion for, you know, a good 40 minutes. <laughs> Would you rather have a one-to-one ratio or one to two ratio of frosting on your cupcakes. Well, having debated it for quite some time on a book discussion podcast. Right. Yes. I'm I'm going to go for a one to two ratio of frosting. I'm going to say the cake is the hero. So I want more cake to frosting. Same. Unless it's Italian buttercream. Unless it's Italian buttercream. Then we'll have a two to one. Yeah. Two to one ratio. Yes. <laughs> Would you rather have a fluffy blanket or an extra heavy blanket or a super soft blanket? Oh. I'm going to go super soft blanket because yeah. that's what I'm, I've got at the moment and I am really, really cozy right now. I yeah. don't feel like I need the extra heavy blanket. And a fluffy blanket, I think we'll probably take on one of those too much. I'll be sneezing. Yeah, I think that that's probably my exact same answer. I I would prefer a super soft blanket. I did though get a heated throw blanket for Christmas. <gasps> Ooh, and it is super soft. A little bit fluffy, but not not too fluffy. Yeah. And has it, it is ha, has cozy. it been a game changer for naps? You know, it's more of a, it's more of a just a like a a sitting on the couch blanket, not a nap blanket. It's not big enough for me to have a nap with it because I like to like get burritoed up, you know. Yes. 
but I do quite enjoy sitting under it. And what makes it even more special is that when sitting under this heated throw blanket, both of my cats, while they do tend to sit in my lap a lot, they've really enjoyed sitting on the heated throw blanket with me. (laughs) Cats know where it's at. They do. They know what's up. I appreciate that. Yes. Oh, Blanket Game has gone to the next level. Love it. Love it. All right. Would you rather binge watch the movie series or the animated TV series? It honestly depends what it is. I've binge watched movie series as probably more than a TV series is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's the Lord of the Rings Extended Edition. Yeah. I think I prefer to binge a TV series than a movie series. Because, oh, unless it's Twilight. Oh, just put them all on. Watch them all day long. It depends yeah, on what sorry. it is, doesn't it? It really depends on it does. what it is. It really, really does. Do we want to say, okay, like Mew Mew Guardian, it's a superhero thing? Because if that's the case, then I'm going to say I'm going to watch, I'm going to binge the TV series. Because, like, Mm -hmm. I binged WandaVision, which was perfection. Yes. I'm not going to binge watch the the movies. Yeah, I think... I'm more selective. I, yeah, I think that I, I'm just, I'm going to stick with the TV series. Mostly because they're... They're shorter, so, like, I have more opportunities to have bathroom breaks and yes. refill my snacks, because yes. I don't like to stop in the middle. No. You know, so if I'm watching a 30, 45-minute, hour-long TV show, well, then I can get up, and I can refill my snacks, yes. and I can take a tinkle break. Tinkle breaks are important. Yes. But the I don't want to get up. The built-in with the TV. Yeah, but I don't want to get up in the middle of a movie because then you have to pause the movie or you miss something. I don't want to do that. Yeah. So you've got I'm to sticking find with that, the TV that show. Sweet spot. Yeah, I'm gonna go T V series. I think yeah. yeah, especially now like opportunity isn't there to binge watch movies like I used to. We yeah. every Saturday we used to watch three or four movies until the wee hours of the morning. And now if I can watch one movie <laughs> without falling asleep it's it's a miracle. Yeah. Um, there is a website that you can go to uh, called Run P. So you can you can find the best times to go pee during a movie. It's like you won't miss anything important. That's a PSA right there. Yes, Run P. If you would like to sponsor the show, <laughs> we would appreciate it. Yeah, we're open to sponsorship. Call up Waffle House. Come on, Waffle House. Make 2024 the year that you up your game. Just like one episode. Last question. Would you rather steal a child's hot dog or pretend to curse them? And why is it pretend to curse them? It's just (laughs) funnier. It's funnier to pretend to curse them. And like... I don't want to take someone's hot dog because it might have already been in their mouth once or they might have put toppings on their hot dog that I don't want on my hot dog. So it would just be much easier to pretend to curse them. Yes. As 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 a mama bear, like, if you steal my child's hot dog, I am going to fucking have you. Yeah. I mean, it's if a dog's stealing it, then it's a little bit of a different man and the chances it's are a, that you've, it's, it's probably a got funnier. a bit too close. And and he's probably just throwing the hot dog at them to get them away. Yeah. <laughs> However, pretending to curse someone, I think I've probably Hilarious. done them. I, I'll have done it in my lifetime at some point. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. Favorite final thought quote. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple. Okay. <laughs> so tasty. But at what cost? 
<laughs> of course it's about the cupcake d- debate. <laughs> oh, okay. This one is... Is it me? Is it the book? You can decide. Okay. And this is why we should just stay in our cosy bed. Yeah, Claire. We know that that is from your real life. <laughs> What have you got? Okay, I also have a couple. Why can't I think suddenly? Come on, think. What's something scary? Real real life, that's a real life quote. Also, just because I like horror movies doesn't mean I can't enjoy other things too. Like magical cats. Again. Real life or book court? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? It's impossible knows? to tell. Nobody knows. No. No. <laughs> uh. Okay. If you liked this, try this. What precious thing are we going to suggest and then probably accidentally end up covering in a month or two? You say accidentally, but I, I covered pocket peaches with full intention. When I said we're covering it, I meant we're covering it. Yes. I am going to recommend a book that I've picked up multiple times and one of my kind friends bought me it for Christmas and it's called Crumbs and it's by Diane Sterling and um, it is actually a webtoon um, publication as well. So you can pick up the graphic novel but you can also see it on webtoons as well and I have seen that. I'm sure it's available on libraries too. So great and it is delightful graphic novel so from the back of the book falling in love just got sweeter in a very special town there's an even more unusual bakery with a selection of baked treats handcrafted to help your dreams come true for Rhea, a quiet young woman with special powers of her own the order is always the same a hot tea with a delicious side of romance when Rhea meets Laurie, the kind barista who aspires to be a professional musician, she gets a real taste of love for the first time. But even with a spark of magic, romance isn't so simple. Both Rhea and Laurie are chasing their own dreams, and even when Rhea starts to see the future, she can't predict her fate with Laurie. Oh. It was a number one digital comic. With over nice. ten mil- with more than ten million daily readers and a hundred billion views annually that's in that is serious so yeah I, i'm i'm really enjoying these like webtoon and tapas and you know the, i can't remember all the other ones coming into print format because i i like the print format yeah um, and it's i prefer that it's it's making these wonderful comics accessible to so many more people um yes you know it's and, it's opening up webtoons, etc. Those those platforms to other people as well. It, it's absolutely yes. brilliant. So I'm really enjoying this comic, you know, evolution, revolution. It's brilliant. So yes, yes. Crumbs by Diane Sterling, and it looks amazing. And I'm so glad I've got it. So I'm desperate to start reading it. So yeah, there we go. Uh, what have you got? I found a book that is like a it's like a compilation of stuff from webtoons but it's not it's not like a, a continual story. It's right. like these little like individual panels that have been put together in a book. Oh, I like those ones. I've got a couple of them that have done that. It's like yeah, they're like yeah, I I understand what you mean. Yeah, so it's not it's not a story. It's just precious little snippets. So it's great if you want to pick something up and just read a little bit cuz you can just read a few pages and then, you know, go on to the very low commitment. Yes, yes, they really are. Um so this one is called Cat's Cafe by Matt Tarpley. So precious. I do need to say anything else. <laughs> right? So, serving up more than just coffee and tea, Cat Cafe provides its cast of adorable characters a gentle, supportive space and a hefty serving of the warm and floofies. There's more. 
Ooh. Welcome to Cat's Cafe, a neighborhood coffee shop where all are welcome. Based on the popular webcomic, Cat's Cafe introduces readers to the adorable denizens of this world. There's Penguin, who has a bit of a coffee problem, and honestly, re- he Penguin reminds me of you, Claire. <laughs> Rabbit, whose anxiety sometimes overwhelms him. Axolotl, whose confidence inspires his friends. The always supportive cat, who provides hot drinks made with love and a supportive ear for anyone's troubles, and many, many more. With a sensitive take on real issues and a gentle, positive outlook, Cat's Cafe is about the power of acceptance, friendship, and love, and delicious cups of coffee. I need to read this now. You do. You really do. I really it's... do. I don't think we're going to be able to cover it if it's not like a story, no, it, unfortunately. It wouldn't work as no. an episode of Fictional Hangover, but no. <laughs> Fictional Hangover Live where we cover one panel of Cat's Cafe. Yes! <laughs> Shortest summary ever! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and when that eventually happens, the regular listeners are like, yeah, yeah, they scrambled this week, didn't they? <laughs> something happened and they got desperate. <laughs> yes, something bad happened. <laughs> oh, okay. I need to um, read that. Okay, so do we have anything for you in Indie Spotlight that can even come close to these delights? We do. So what I'm going to suggest for new and indie spotlight it's a comic series it's on webtoons it's also available on uh tapas and you can get them in print form but most of the print form stuff comes through kickstarter so they're short runs it's called mercury mouse oh 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 this is familiar and it's adorable You can find Mercury Mouse on MercuryMouse.com as well. And here's a little bit of a summary. When Harvey, a geek lab technician, rattles the words, evildoers better flee, here comes Mercury, Harvey magically transforms himself into the superhero powerhouse called Mercury Mouse. And new episodes are posted on the first Saturday of each month. And I just, I just want to say... This is by Larry Rains, who is married to my cousin. And I've been reading Mercury Mouse since it started, and I love Mercury Mouse. So I'm upset with myself that I haven't shared it before now, not because I am somewhat tenuously related to not the artist. Not for nepotism's sake. No. But Mercury Mouse is amazing, so I would love for everyone to go and check it out. Mercury I Mouse. have seen Mercury Mouse because I'm I'm on Kickstarter all the time for other things, yeah. um, and webtoon and stuff for other things. I have seen Mercury Mouse. I've not read it, yeah. but I have seen it. So I have to I have to check that out. Yeah, I like Mercury Mouse. Cool. It's precious and a little bit ridiculous. Well, that's that's exactly my bag. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's it for this episode of Fictional Hangover. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. Join us next time as we discuss Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire. Now, since this is the beginning of a new year, we're going to try something out that's a little bit new. And we're going to return to book club. We used to have Vampire Book Club every month. Yeah. But then, you know, life got in the way. But now... We're going to try a book club on Discord. So if you're interested in discussing Every Heart a Doorway with us and then participating in other book clubs and also just other general chat, please find Fictional Hangover on Discord and join in with us. It'll be a good time. We'll have special, we'll have a special book club, like a separate book club discussion, and then a general chat as well. So join us on Discord to discuss Every Heart a Doorway. 
Is it just the one book, or are we covering the entire series? Well, Claire, we're going to be covering the entirety of the Wayward Children series by Sean and McGuire throughout the year. Excellent. But we have to start somewhere. We have to start with one. We start with the first one. (sighs) And number eight is coming out in January, so it's a very exciting time that if you haven't read the series, like I haven't, so I'm late to the party on this one. (laughs) Yes. Hashtag plug-in. Um, then it's a good time to start and it's a good time to join in with other people reading it for the first time too. yes yes and as you said hashtag always be plug-in late to the party is our new monthly theme so this is a great opportunity like you said if you haven't read every heart of doorway because it's been out for a few years if you haven't read every heart of doorway this is a great one to put on your cute little precious little fictional hangover book club theme chart thingy that i made you can find it on social media that was really clear and easy to understand what i just said but join in with our book club challenge that we have every year because this is the beginning of the year you can start right now being Read published a book across that- all socials yes Read a book that goes along with our monthly theme, and now you've got a cute little little chart to put your books on to keep up with all year long. Nice. All right. Look out for our Would You Rather polls and monthly challenges on social media. Don't forget about our book club on Discord. Be sure to visit our shop on Redbubble at fictionalhangover.redbubble.com for all your favorite fictional hangover-themed merchandise, and become a patron of ours on Patreon at patreon.com slash fictionalhangover. Until next time, remember, the only cure for a fictional hangover is another book. You can find us at fictionalhangover.com. Follow us on Instagram, Threads, TikTok, and YouTube at Fictional Hangover. And find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fictional hangover. If you like this episode, check out our others and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe so you don't miss out. And finally, special thanks to Liz Emerson for our music. You can find her on Facebook and Patreon. Thanks for listening.